So when I left Westmont, I applied for the test pilot school and was accepted. And then after I graduated from that, I stayed on and we started a postgraduate school there. The second call came out for, for the second group and I, I joined that. I put in my application and was accepted then. So let me go back when you just mentioned Sputnik. How many of you here today were born or after 1960? After 1960? Maybe a little short background. But Frank just mentioned Sputnik. You know, we're used to having thousands of satellites swimming around the planet these days, and there are about 1,100 of them are active today. And of course, we couldn't live without them 24 7 every second. We can't live without these satellites. But until 1957, there was no such thing as a man made satellite, and it was the Russians, the Soviets, who put that uh, Sputnik, they called it, up there. It was 184 pounds, uh, was, was a little bigger than a big beach ball, but it, they didn't talk or anything. They did, it just beeped its way around the world. But the beep, uh, the Soviets were proud of that. They said, we beat the U.S. into space. And what Frank just said, now it's competitive. It was a national security question. And we had to ramp up really fast to become co competitive uh, with the Russians. And so how quickly did you all think that could happen, given that the Russians were ahead of us, Jim? Well, uh, you know, uh, I have looked at that technology. I, I one time wanted to become a rocket engineer, so 57 when Sputnik went up, you know, I, I thought, did we have all those Germans down here? And, you know, and, uh, what, what happened to us? And, you, know, uh, you know, we tried to put up a, a satellite. Uh, the, the Navy tried to put up a satellite. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it, it rolled off the log cab, it's still beeping. <laughs> uh, and uh, so finally we had to gather again. But, but and the, know, Ger the Germans put it up. We were second best. The Germans put it up. Finally. Well, yeah, the, yeah. The Germans we brought came over. Von Braun and his peanut Mundi team came over and finally built the. Uh, Used a booster finally that was was being designed for military, and at that at that time we thought that this would be a civilian program. So the the Vanguard rocket was uh, essentially a civilian rocket that was you know being uh, put up by the Navy. Uh, but then we switched to the military and we put up uh, what was it, Explorer One, and that Explorer One was the one that discovered the Van Allen belts actually. Uh, uh, around the earth, and so we did get something accomplished there. The, uh, on May 25th, 1961, President Kennedy, and it was only a few months after he was inaugurated, uh, gave a speech to Congress and the country, and he challenged the country and said, our goal is to land a man on the moon in this decade, and as Wally Shira was fond of saying, and returning him safely to earth, being the most important part of that challenge for <laughs> President Kennedy. Uh, but there was the challenge beginning in 61, and then we started with the program. So it was Mercury, six one-man flights, Gemini, 11 two-man flights, and then how many, 12? 12 Apollos? Uh, I think so, 12. Uh, Three-man flights. So how confident were you, Frank, when, when when the first, Alan Shepard went off, that this was going to really turn into something. Well, I was on a treadmill taking my physical to join NASA when we stopped everything and watched the <laughs> Shepard fly. And uh, I wasn't at all confident we were able to beat the Russians at that point, but that was the main reason I was there. And uh, so I was, that's what I can, I can say, uh, I was, uh, reasonably certain that I, I never felt that we would be beaten by the Russians. And I, I was determined, I think Jim and I both did to do everything we should to make sure we were. And that we weren't alone. Everybody in the country, everybody in the program was totally organized and oriented. What was the mood of the country then? I know we're talking like 1961. Well, I think it was kind of bad. I think the uh, that uh, fiasco, uh, Cuba, uh, just passed, you know, and, and uh, 
it appeared <clears throat> that we were second rate to the Russians because they had put someone already up into space and orbit somebody. And all we had done by the time when President Kennedy made that commitment was a 15-minute suborbital flight of Alan Shepard. So it appeared that we were sec second best. And I really think that President Kennedy, with maybe the consultant of, uh, of his science advisors, put that in, whether he really thought that we were going to be able to land on the moon by the end of the decade is probably doubtful. But he had to say something to the American people uh, to give them confidence and give them the uh, hope of what we can do in technology to be a uh, leader in the world. Well, that was really a bold decision because his science advisor vision was against it. Yeah. Kennedy made it own, and, uh, and I have to hand it to him because I think that was a very courageous decision.